Welcome to Motion Study, where we discuss a cool animation and try to apply some aspect of it to our own projects. In today's episode, I'll show you how this John Deere ad uses the snap ease that applied to my boring robot assembly animation. And at the end, we'll make it quite awesome using a snap ease. It's then your turn to do something similar using whatever tools or technology you want. So I found this John Deere ad on Twitter, and let's just go full screen to watch it in all its glory, and we'll just watch it with the audio and get the full deal. Run with us on a John Deere Gator XUV. And never run out of attachments. Nothing runs like a deer. All right, pretty cool, all right? Pretty dramatic. It's not your typical web animation that I go into, all right? But I just loved the snap that they did, all right? And they did it so consistently. So we'll play it one more time, no audio. I just want you to pay attention to how things come in super fast, they go slow, and then they snap at the end, okay? So there's like this really quick reveal where they come in, and then they go like a linear rate, and then they snap. And what I want to point out, let's just scrub back a little bit here. Let's just go to where, let's pause, where we have this toolbox come in, all right? If I go back here, there's no toolbox yet, all right? But it's going to, at one point, it's going to... Where are you? You're gonna show up pretty far away, all right? So we're right at the top here and it's going to move in and it's going to move down very quickly and then it's gonna go sort of slow for a little bit and then boom, you'll see that it smashes in. Now, what's great about this is that not only does it smash and snap into place, but watch how the truck is bouncing around as sort of a secondary action as it hits, okay, all right? And that really makes the effect along with the snap audio too, all right? So let me just play this a little bit more and you'll notice that every object again shows up quickly and then it moves at a slow linear pace and then you have that snap. And every time something snaps into place, you're going to see the truck shake a little bit in the opposite direction, all right? It's actually really pretty cool. So I asked myself, how could I apply this sort of snapping to something that, you know, I want to build? Now, I'm not going to build a 3D model, have it spinning around with the camera moving and have all this stuff sort of coming out of different angles, all right? But I did want to try to mimic this whole snap approach, all right? I'm going to call it the snap attack, all right? How about that for you? So let's take a look at what we can do with the right ease. So here's my robot animation that I created using the Greensock animation platform. And you'll see that, you know, it's not too snazzy, all right? It's kind of blah. There's no clicking, there's no snapping, and it's just kind of like, eh. So let's see what will happen if we use the proper ease. Right now, things are just sort of slowing down as they get into place, and it just doesn't feel right. So I'm gonna use the Greensock Ease Visualizer to create the perfect ease. So if I run this right now, you'll see that the ball slows down towards the end, and that's your typical ease out ease that slows down. We could make this a little bit better by increasing the strength to like a power three and then maybe doing a direction of in. So now it's going to start slow and then speed up on the way out. But still, it's not enough of a snap at the end and it's not really what I'm going for. So I'm gonna go over to a custom ease and what I'm going to do is create a point right about here and I'm going to pull it up right to about there. And once um, we shoot in quick, what we want to do is sort of go uh, slow and linear for a while. So I'm going to need another point right about here. And I'm just going to drag it down right about to there. And I'm just going to eye it out real quick. Let's move this in so we're no longer blue. Get that up there. And it can take a while to get the right exact perfect ease, but something like this should do what I need. It's gonna start super fast, and then it's gonna go slow and linear, and then snap at the end. So let's just keep an eye on the ball here. And there we, boom, there's my snap at the end, okay? I'm pretty happy with this. I might even, let's see if I can get this just a little bit up like that. Just wanna move it in. I want that thing to really snap. Where is it? Pop, okay? I'm liking that. So what I'm gonna do is take this ease data here, copy it, and back in my code, I'm just gonna paste that data that I copied. And now the next time I run, we should have a much better snap. And let's see, 
Ah, you can see already, you can almost feel the snap. So how do we get this even better? I do love this ease. You'll see that it comes in quick, it goes slow, and then you have that snap at the end, all right? So what I'm gonna do is just scroll down here, and to make it even more realistic, what we're going to do is add a little bit of audio because nothing makes things come more to life with animation than the right audio. So let me run this, and you're gonna see, what do we get? How does that come together so well? All right, it's almost like this thing's built of strong magnets. I'm really digging it. Now, what would be even better is if once we snapped, maybe the robot shook a little bit in the other direction. Well, I have something programmed for that too. Again, this isn't a tutorial, but it will show you the power of code. Let me run, and now you're going to see that every time I play this, and he clicks, you see that little bit of a shake that goes in the opposite direction? That's what we can do, all right? So now I'm really loving how I could be inspired by that John Deere ad and make this fun little robot animation. Now with animation, timing is literally everything and you can play around with different variables to get the effect that you want. Right now I have this distance variable that says how far each part is going to move. So I could make that something like 200 to get a little bit more extreme and let's see what that's going to do for us all right that just means each part comes in from a further direction all right by changing one variable i'm able to change the entire animation there's some other variables that i configured here as well let me just uh, scroll up here um, inside of my snap part function um, if i use the wrong duration for the animation it's going to kill it so if I make it one second long, watch what happens. This is the duration of each part moving into place. Snooze fest, right? No one wants to wait for all these things to come into place. Um, it just doesn't work right here. But you can still see how that ease is working. We're going slow and still snapping at the end, but it's a little bit too much. So I would probably use a much shorter duration as I had previously. The shake distance, that's how far it's gonna shake when it clicks. Well, if I make it like 50 to be kind of stupid, let's run, and now you're going to see that it's probably too much. You see, you don't need that much jiggle. But again, when you program this stuff, it makes it very easy to mess around and get the right variables. The shake duration, if that was longer, that's also not going to work. But, you know, you might get something that you can use. Let's see. Yeah, that's not really too realistic, right? So again, I'm doing all this to show you how important choosing the right timing is in your animation, all right? The right ease and the right timing is everything. So let's go back to 0 0.5. It's just gonna be a very, very, very quick shake. So the shake distance, I don't know. Maybe we'll make it around 20. We'll run one more time. And then we'll see, hopefully, what is what I'm happy with. All right, pretty cool. That shake distance is probably still a little much, but I don't know. Sometimes over-exaggerating things helps add to the effect, and sometimes you're going for more realism. I'm gonna stick with that five that I started out with, and we're gonna have a really nice, to me, effect. So hopefully this inspires you to take some snap animation into your own project. Post your work and tag it with Motion Study and at Snorkel TV on Twitter, and I'll be sure to look at it and pass it around. To make sure you don't miss the next episode of Motion Study, be sure to follow Snorkel TV on Twitter or sign up for the newsletter at snorkel.tv/newsletter. And it always helps if you tell your friends too. Thanks for watching.